Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. You can see that we have extra decorations in this place and our colors have changed once again because we are officially in the season of Advent. It is the first Sunday in Advent this week. And so we are anxiously awaiting the birth of our king and we will be lighting the Advent wreath throughout the next couple weeks. So with that, if you would like to light the Advent candles, uh, please see me following worship and we'll get you a week all signed up. Also following worship, we will have um, goodies and coffee out in our gathering center, so please stay for that. This morning, we have Chris Freezy with us. He is a seminarian student, and he has about two years to go, so um, I've been on that journey, Pastor Jamie has been on that journey, and it is quite, quite the experience. So he will be sharing with us uh, a sermon this morning, uh, and then also again on Wednesday. And then in two sad notices, uh, we heard this morning that Ike Neshheim, his son, passed away. He had um, cancer and is in Colorado and um, passed away either yesterday or this morning. So please keep Ike and his family in your prayers during this difficult time. And then Della Morlock's funeral will be tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. if you would like to come to that and celebrate her life with her family. So with that, let us ready our hearts and minds for worship this morning. We gather as we live in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in our gathering hymn. is flying. The watchmen on the heights are crying. Awake Jerusalem at last. Midnight hears the welcome voices and at the thrilling cry rejoices. Come forth, you maidens, night is past. The bridegroom comes awake. Your lamps with gladness take. Alleluia. Rise and prepare the feast to share. Go meet the bridegroom who draws near. Zion hears the watchman singing, and all her heart with joy is bringing. She wakes, she rises from her gloom. Her dear friend comes down all glorious, the strong in grace, in truth victorious. Her star is risen, her light is come. Now come, O oh blessed one, Lord Jesus, God's own Son, sing Hosanna. Oh, hear the call, come one, come all, and follow to the banquet hall. Glory, let heaven adore you, let saints and angels sing before you with harp and cymbals clearest tone. Gates of pearl, twelve portals gleaming, lead us in bliss beyond all dreaming with angel choirs around your throne. No eye a 
has caught the light, nor hear the thundering might of such glory. There we will go, what joy we'll know, there sweet delight will ever flow. Today, the first week in Advent, we light the candle of hope. We hear God's promise of hope in Isaiah 2, verses 2 through 4, that in days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations, nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. In the midst of the darkness of the world, we light the hope candle to remind us that Jesus is our eternal hope. Our hope rests in him and his birth that comes in just a few short weeks. Please join me in prayer. Faithful God, out of war's chaos, you bring the order of peace. Renew us in hope that we may work toward Christ's advent of peace among all nations. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. Amen. One candle to watch for Messiah, let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel, God fulfills the promise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For 
the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lord. strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and joy. for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Our responsive psalm this morning is Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord.
You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. gospel this morning comes from the gospel of St. Luke, the 21st chapter. St. Luke writes, Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the world. People will faint from fear and forbidding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all things that will take place and stand before the Son of Man. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you on this first Sunday of Advent. As we gather in this space together, I want to take a moment and pause. Take this moment to sit in peace, to reflect on our last few days, perhaps take a quick nap from all the turkey on Thursday, and in this pause, think about this question. What time is it? In your mind, do you have to look at your own watch to give your answer? Did you have to look at your smartphone? Did you have to look at the person sitting next to you to answer this question? Perhaps did you answer with the time is the season of Advent? Or the time is almost the end of November and the beginning of December? How else might you have answered that question? In your response, did you give a linear answer? An answer that follows the correct flow of what comes next. For example, in our order of service, after the gospel, we have a sermon. After this, we will hear our song of the day, and so on and so forth. Every church I've ever been a part of has followed the same pattern every single Sunday. And I have yet to see a church that opens with a sermon and closes with a gospel. We expect a similar flow in our order of service, just as we expect a similar flow in our time. 
We expect that every day of our daily lives begins at the same time. We expect our day to be as linear as the last with every minute and every hour in their respective places. One after the other, always following the same pattern. As we move past the time of COVID-19 and try to assemble our shattered realities, I think about COVID-19 and when it started. The feeling of confusion, do we wear a mask, do we not wear a mask? Is it safe to gather with anyone outside our immediate families? The weeks spent in quarantine where time seemed to stand still and nothing made any sense. And I will confess, I am a creature of habit. Every morning I shower, I get dressed, make the morning coffee, and begin my day, day in and day out. Always the same routine, morning after morning, and not a single thing out of place. Yet, in quarantine, my daily routine no longer mattered. Why bother getting dressed with nowhere to go? With my daily routine out the window, so, so went my sense of time and place. During quarantine, I learned two things. The first being, I need more hobbies. And number two, and probably the most important, we live our lives at the mercy of a clock. Our eyes are glued to the minute hand, racing the hour hand, only to add up how much longer we are stuck in one spot until it's time to move to the next, day in and day out. We all know the sensation of staring at a clock, hoping that by looking at it, somehow the clock will speed up. However, the truth is this. The longer you stare at the clock, the slower the clock seems to move. In college, I became really good at breaking down how much time I had left to spend in one more class. And so if my math is correct, an hour and 30 minute class was really only six 15 minute intervals. All to make the situation much more bearable. And for those of you who are curious if this church service lasts exactly one hour, we really are only here for 15 minute intervals. I can see who's watching the clock. <laughs> the point is this. In the moments of life that seem to take the longest, we find ways to speed up our time. And yet in the moments we find the most joy, time seems to slip by, leaving us to wonder how we went from Wednesday night to now Sunday morning. And yet time keeps moving on. As I reflect on our question this morning, what time is it? I am drawn to the answer of this. This is the time of preparation. We are in the season of anticipation, awaiting our light in a darkened world. This time in the church calendar reminds us that our weary world awaits in a silent prayer and for the Savior who is on his way. Today we light the candle of hope, but our gospel today is filled with anything but hope. We hear the teaching of Jesus warning us that the end is near. Wars will rage, nations will rise up, people will faint from the fear of forbidding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Of all the parts of the Bible to make a movie on, this would be it. Picture it. A Michael Bay film filled with earth rumbling, bombs and explosions going off as people run in terror from the doom that surrounds them. And if anyone from Hollywood is listening, here is your pitch. We have a movie about the passion. A movie about Christmas, Noah's Ark, and even the Exodus. And yet, this is probably one of the most action-packed parts of the Bible, and there is no movie depicting the scene unfolding in our gospel today. Today's action-packed gospel seems to work in reverse of time. Today, we celebrate the first day of the season of Advent, the beginning of a new church year. But today of all days, 
we hear a gruesome warning of despair and the end of time. So this begs the question, why? Why, out of all the messages of hope that we could read today in the celebration of Advent and the coming of Christ, why do we read what seems like a Stephen King novel for our gospel? My dear friends, in this dark and twisted gospel, there is still hope. We still find the joy in the midst of chaos and the promise of our salvation. For in our gospel today, yes, we are bombarded by the end of times. We are surrounded by monstrous, uh, excuse me, monstrosities, and yet God still speaks to us. God is still present in the midst of all of our chaos. For in the midst of our gospel today, we hear the message of our hope. Then they will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. I will confess that I love the season of Advent. I love the anticipation that leads to Christmas and the new year. But among these things, I with my whole heart despise winter. Long nights, freezing cold, trying to walk on ice without making a fool of yourself. Boy, did I pick the right place to live. Winter is roughly eight to nine months out of our entire year, surrounded in cold and darkness, trying to ice the wounds from the ice. But as I think about this, I recall a Facebook post that came across my newsfeed just the other day, and the post reads, If you can't find any joy in winter, all you'll have is more snow and less joy. My dear friends, truer words have never been spoken. In the winter, it's it's hard to find that hope that summer will soon be here to usher in the warmth of the new summer sun. And winter will be gone for another few weeks. But let me say this. I have found my hope in winter, a reason to sit back and enjoy some TV, taking time to slow down and not have to be on the move all the time, wrapping up in a warm blanket with the snow coming down and hot chocolate in your cup, enjoying the warmth from inside as snow rains down on the outside. These are what get me through winter. My dear friends, When the world seems at its darkest, these are the moments that God is on the move. These are the moments that God is saying, close your eyes. I'm about to turn on a light. The church I grew up in at down the road begins the season of Advent with all the lights in the church off, symbolizing the world before Christ. As the season progresses, more and more lights are added to begin the illumination of our void that is a church. And by Christmas Eve, the church shines like the sun. Our gospel today opens with darkness, but as we read, we are reminded that the light is on the move. And again, I ask you, what time is it? The time is now. We are preparing for our hope to come. In this season of Advent, I invite you to stop, pause, and enjoy time with one another. May the promise of God's awaited Son fill you with hope and confidence. May you be comforted by knowing that the light is on its way. May you be surrounded by the love of God poured out by our world. And most of all, when our world seems dark, When you feel the farthest from the light, know that God is about to turn on a light in your life. Just close your eyes and wait. Dear friends, grace and peace to you all on this Advent Sunday. We continue with our song of the day.
Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together into a time of prayer. Let us pray. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Gracious Lord God, you are a God of presence and peace. 
Strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming into the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord God, you are a God of equity and compassion. You bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord God, you are a God of comfort and care. Be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and any life transition. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord God, you are a God of promises kept and new dreams awakened. Shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and other relief organizations. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord God, you are a God of companionship and community. We give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide with you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Lord, in your mercy. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts that only you know. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. indeed right our duty and our joy that we should should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, have man birth of all of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. God's meal for God's people and all are welcome. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace, deep and lasting peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in our sending him. Fling wide the door and bar the gate. The King of glory comes in state, the Lord of lords and King of kings, the Savior of the world who brings his great salvation to the earth. So raise a shout of holy mirth and praise our God of Lord, create our spirit word. He is the rock of our belief, the heart of mercy's gentle self, his kingly crown, his holiness, his scepter is his loveliness. He brings our sorrows to an end. Now gladly praise our King and friend, 
and worship him with song, forgiving us from wrong. O oh, happy towns and blessed lands that live by their true King's commands, and blessed be the hearts we rule, the humble places where He dwells. He is the rightful Son of Bliss who fills our lives and makes us His Creator of the world, our only strength for good. Come, Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our hearts are open wide in trust. Oh, show us now your lovely grace. Upon the sorrow shine your face, and let your Holy Spirit guide our journey in your grace so wide. We praise your holy name from age to age the same. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.